Okay, welcome to La Flipo. You ever heard of it referred to as La Flipo? No. Okay, well, it's the first time for everything. <laughs> uh, today we talk about messaging, we talk about marketing, we talk about life, we talk about therapy, we talk about spoilage dates on food, we talk about Matthew McConaughey, we talk about all sorts of stuff. Your milk expires on January 5th. What is the last day you drink that milk? Maybe December 31st at latest. I don't I don't mess with spoilage dates. I, I don't even come close to them. Um, we also talk about, what else do we talk about? What else do we talk about? We talk about messaging we and marketing. We talk about messaging. We talk about marketing in all realms, mostly political. Uh, we also uh, have, uh, have a little actionable for you at the end of the episode, something to take away, something to do after you've listened to the episode. Tell us why you are grateful for your life. Okay. All right. So listen, if you have not signed up for LawFlip, we have a new exciting announcement. This is the app that I've created. It's called LawFlip and it's where lawyers can refer cases to each other. It used to be that you just had to be a lawyer in California to make or receive referrals on LawFlip. Guess what? We've opened it up to all 50 states. Did you hear me? We're nationwide, baby. Like, you know how like Pitbull is Mr. 305, Mr. Worldwide? We are nationwide. LawFlip is nationwide. Lawyers in every single state sign up. www.lawflip.com. Let's go. LawFlip, LawFlip, objection, your honor. Turn, turn the game upside down. Law flip, law flip, objection, your honor. Turn the, turn the game upside down. Welcome to Law Flip. Thanks for, thanks for getting on with us today. Good morning, or whenever you're listening to it. Uh, uh, my name is Arian Tabibian. I'm a producer of the show. With us today, Benji Smith. Hey, how are you? I know, first of all, I, I, to this time, I've never heard you say your last name. I've been pronouncing it wrong the entire time. Well, you call me Aryan, I do. too. I call myself Aryan to Vivian, but that's what okay. I'm talking to white people. Anyways, <laughs> Benjamin, can I tell you what I would like to talk about today? Yes. Okay. Today, I would like to talk about media coverage. I would like to talk about messaging. And when we were previewing this earlier, uh, we were just talking back and forth before we got the show started. You're like, well, messaging is marketing. And if we're going to talk about messaging, we have to talk about marketing. And there are a few stories that we have on the docket today that all tie in messaging and marketing. Okay. And I want to talk about that stuff. First, uh, today's Wednesday. Uh, it is. We tape Wednesdays, Wednesday mornings. Um, sometimes we're a little behind on the news for the week because we only have this one opportunity to tape. Tomorrow... The uh, the hearings, the Jan 6 committee hearings begin. Uh, this is a big day in politics. Mm. I think I think I've read like 20 articles just on just on on the hearings are coming. Uh, uh, they're about to start. Yeah. Um, one, one one key thing that stood out to me is that they hired like the producer of like what was it like ABC or something? Some some hot, some great producer that produced some amazing event that I can't remember right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and their whole goal is like, oh well, we can't get bogged down in the like what happened of the things that we already know and like all of that and like we have to find to put a way to push forward and to and to cut against the the uh, the poor. Cut against like like uh, the the people who are gonna get who are gonna like spin it. You know what I yeah. mean? Like cut it, cut against like the the Republicans uh, on the hill that 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 are gonna come and be like, oh, this is all phony. Like, and, yeah. and you're just gonna break everything down. And I think like okay, like hiring this guy to like kind of form this like this next week was a great call. But still, I'm sure we can expect a lot of bullshit tomorrow. Mm -hmm. A lot of spin tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, like, as a viewer, okay, what are the things that you feel mm -hmm. are lacking from these committees to, like, truly make them prime time, to truly have people tune in? 
I think the challenge for me is, is that I, like you're talking about this being like a blockbuster type thing. But it, do, it doesn't feel that way to you. I, I didn't even know that it was starting tomorrow. Don't care that it's starting tomorrow. Don't have faith that it will do anything. I ha, I, I, I feel that from two th- prior to even 2016, but like till present, like, like good does not overcome bad in public so, so what, square. So would, Except, would it have to be, would it have to be that tomorrow's hearing is just so fucking hot and like so like if i don't know what would i don't know what would do it because first of all i don't think like the effective the most effective uh lawyers and advocators they've done this that right the eric swalwells the shifts the um the i forgot the guy's name who did a good job that lawyer daniel goldman who did one of the impeachment hearings they put on the best case imaginable but obviously not they did they did it just they, they but it they, doesn't work it didn't work so best case for what i mean i mean we've seen a dozen times that it's not like the legal world really like has an effect on politics right it's not like anybody ever gets arrested goes to jail pays any fines like there's some like bullshit charges here or there you know peter <laughs> navarro whatever it wasn't even real like whatever um it's marketing. It's but messaging. like that, you say okay, best case, but like best case, how I, it didn't, it didn't do anything. Well, look, the you know, to be is, fair, to be fair, Biden won the election, so maybe, maybe I'm underselling uh, yeah, sure. how effective those hearings were. You know, maybe yeah. I'm, maybe I'm because Sleepy Joe beat Trump. That's a pretty crazy victory, right? And so maybe I'm under stating how effective those hearings were those impeachment hearings were maybe they really did like you know accumulate to really yeah. have an effect and i think i think ultimately um the you need to have sizzle you need to have steak and you need to have sizzle so i think about my dad right my dad was i think in his 30s yeah. when he immigrated here um Wife and a kid at yeah. the time, two year old kid, fleeing uh, revolution. Yeah, um, comes here, and he always he always flaunts. He's like, "Oh, when I was your age, I was a socialist too. I was so liberal. I was so liberal. <laughs> you wouldn't even know me. You wouldn't even know me." And now he's like very very staunch conservative. Yeah. Um, I think I think you know it, it comes from. Just the, the obviously it comes from like the places that he's listening to and where he's getting his media. I think also though, you know, he's seen a lot in his life that has set him up for these beliefs, right? Like he's seen this very repressive government come up in Iran mm-hmm. through the guise of socialism, right. right? It was like, oh, you have this king and this king is 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 punching down on you and and like and stealing all your money and like, you know what, I'm gonna come save you and and socialism and it's gonna be great and whatever, whatever. And like in comes this Islamic slate state that ruins the country. Um and so and so like he has some g- genuine founding for his beliefs uh around these things, right? And so whenever I think about messaging in the U.S., I think about my dad a lot. Whenever I think about these hearings, I think about my dad. I think you about have to, you have to go to where they are. That's where the like the the Matthew McConaughey thing yesterday exactly. was so effective. Exactly. So where like my dad used to say, <clears throat> and his old partner Sam, who were like legendary litigators, whenever there was an issue that you'd be concerned about, like a best issue on the other side, you have to take that issue. And make that your best issue, right? So you take a Matthew McConaughey, what I, what I thought was so effective about what he did yesterday is he preemptively argued for gun owners. Yeah. He preemptively addressed gun gun owners' concerns by saying, we need to strengthen the Second Amendment by doing this. Yeah. Right? You have, you have, you need to talk about law and order you you somehow let the republicans hijack law and order right the crime we are down on we're, we're we are going to take care of crime right. we're going to do all this stuff what the hearings need to do is say we need to address law and order exactly because if you look at it like the republican table 
is so flip floppy. You know, law and order. We're the we're the pro government party, but then also it's like, oh, I want my gun so I could overthrow the government right. at any given time. And like, like I feel like I, I do, and a lot of a lot of like the the pundits that I listen to, a lot of it is like, oh, like well, look at all these obvious con- contradictions. Like this is this is so stupid, and we spend so much of our time just like calling Republicans stupid. And that it and, almost, that, but it goes to that point of like you. You're only saying what's wrong with them, and then you end up giving up nationalism and patriot, like being a patriot, because all you're doing is saying everything that they're doing is wrong right. and stuff. Like you have to own being a patriot. You're a patriot because of this. Yeah. Because I don't want people. I mean, this isn't that hard. It, I'm a patriot because I don't want people attacking my capital. Yeah. And and Matthew McConaughey honestly did a great job. You know, it was it was odd because like I first saw it on TikTok, which mm-hmm. is like really goes to show how much time we're spending on TikTok. But <laughs> first see it on TikTok, right? I see like a like a CBS news. I follow like all the news yeah. agencies on TikTok. It's like a nice way to just quickly get like little bits of it. So I see he's like at the White House. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Hop over to C SPAN, check out the whole video. Okay, neat. He's up there. I want to know what the conversation was in the White House where like they they made that decision to be like I, it's easy he's he's he's, a, gonna he's, come he's up here. it's it's actually like un, it's so unfortunate that like but it happens to be the perfect yeah. sort of marketing opportunity exactly. for gun safety and it really makes me wish that our politicians were messaging the way that he was messaging because it was so fu- I mean it was a show. Don't get right. me wrong. He was acting. He's an actor. It was a show. Yeah. But it was so fucking good. Yeah. It was. The, it was. It was incredible. Yeah. It was actually. I. I. I wasn't sure. I was gonna be. Like, Is this gonna be cheesy? No. He thread that needle. He. He checked every box from a conservative standpoint. He checked the boxes. He got out front of the issues. He from a, from a human element. I mean, like like I almost shed a tear finally. Yeah. Like. And it just was common sense. This is common sense. And it, it makes it so obvious that you, how could you not agree? You know, and it, and it, and it always comes back to this. Anytime we have like one of these really good moments, it always comes back to, to like, God damn, I wish Joe Biden could fucking finish a fucking sentence. He can't, he can't, he, he, you know what? When I first became aware of Joe Biden like 25 years ago, he was extremely yeah. compelling. I would see him, I think he was on like real time with Bill Maher maybe like, I don't know, 20 years ago. And I'd be like, this guy's amazing. Yeah, Dude, the guy's 80 years old. Yeah. The guy's 80 years old. I mean. It's really tough. You wouldn't want, like if he was driving right next to you, you'd be a little bit concerned. I would. Yeah, I legitimately would. You know? And it's like, it's hard because, because he has a reputation of kind of being like a policy guy. You know, like and I'm not, I'm not engaging in ageism. I, my grandma, who's a, who's turning a hundred years old is sharper than pretty much anybody I know, but there's still like, there's still just the realities of the, there's, you can't have that vigor, even, even Trump. I mean, like the truth is Trump to be completely candid. He has more, he does it he, for the cameras. He has more he, he energy. Pushes it out for the he cameras. has more energy than, than, than Biden. He just yeah. does. You know, Trump made that joke about, uh, Biden getting a shot in his in his ass before one of the <laughs> debates. Honestly, like I wish Biden does get a shot in his ass. It doesn't matter all. Yeah, like I I really hope he's drugged up. Yeah, because like he just it, knew. It, but listen, he knew he he has provided the country with something that it desperately needed. Quiet. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Calm. Yes, there's craziness going on, but like it was so crazy every single day. He he really I think knew that the country needed calm. Yeah. And I know it's like it bothers me on two fronts. It bothers me for the Democrats that refuse to like admit that he can't form a sentence. Mm-hmm. And then it also bothers me on the on the flip side whenever like Republicans are like, oh, he's just the puppet and his staff run everything. Right. I'm like, that's not true either. Like no, if you actually listen to him, he's extremely ex- smart and exactly. experienced and has great ideas and all that. But but look, he he's still a old school politician. He wasn't my primary vote. Let me put it that Who way. Who was your primary vote? Bernie? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, you I'm literally a- are like the like the the devil child of Persians. Like like there's how many Persians in the world? Like literally, like li- like every time I go to like Shabbat dinner, this I'm guy the only- voted for Bernie. Yeah, 
Yeah. You support Gascon? You voted for Gascon? <gasps> You're the reason that our city is doing so poorly. Oh my, do you support Newsom? You, you for sure support Karen Bass over... Oh, over... fuck yeah. Karen Bass over Caruso any day. Yeah, because Although... we just had our elections yesterday. No, it's not that... Some of them were final. Some of them, like, turned into runoffs. Uh, Garcetti... Not Garcetti. Uh, Caruso and Bass basically were in the same ballpark. They're yeah. going to go off to a runoff election in November. And it's it's tough. It's tough. Let me, let me tell you why this is tough for me. I really like Rick Caruso. I really like Rick. That's because he runs that shit tight. He runs that. You shit go to that Grove. You go to the Palisades thing. That thing runs like a chef's kiss. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want my city running like that. Yeah. I want. I don't want my city running like a piece of shit. Okay. I love LA. I grew up here, born and raised. One of the few. You and I. We're not, there's not that many of us. We were born and raised here, okay? I when agree I with go you. around this city right now, it's like a it's it's like yeah. a junkyard. In the Grove, the Americana are like literally like the 8500 where that Trader Joe's is. Yep. Like that every single one of his properties are gold. Yeah. Right? And I, I love him. I love his vibe. Like, uh, my girlfriend just started interning for him and his real estate company. And, like, she loves it there. And you're going to say that uh, you want you don't want him to win. I don't. I don't. I mean. Why? I don't agree with his politics. Like, I simply don't. I think. What, I are think, the, what like, do you disagree like, with? Elon Musk tweeted about his, like, executive leadership and whatever. Yes. Which is, like, a great point. This guy knows how to run a fucking don't company. Don't refer to Donald Trump because he's not the same but, type of person. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not at all. I mean, I mean, first of all, you, I don't think it, you can find a more put-together person than Rick Caruso. Mm -hmm. I mean, his style, his demeanor, the way he presents himself, the way he, he talks, like, like, He's a professional. I mean, he's old money, you know, like, like he, he has it, but you look, he's had a lifelong career in politics, you know, standing in the back, putting where his money, where his mouth is. And I don't agree with where he's put his money. Where, 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 where do you disagree? The Mitch McConnell whole deal. That shit. I don't know that. Me tell me, tell me. I don't know that. He like gave millions to this guy. He gave millions to Mitch McConnell. Uh, yeah. That's tough. I'm still going to vote for him. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I mean, like, I, I, when I, people... I just, I just, we, I, I, I'm, I'm definitely progressive. I definitely want all progressive policies. He was smart enough to give me the, 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 uh, sort of the backing of switching to be a Democrat so I could feel comfortable when I go to sleep at night, even though it's probably bullshit. But, I have seen this country or this city go to hell. It needs to turn around. And I think that if there's anybody that can do it, he's the type, of, you just need to, like, I'm not saying that he's, he will have selfish reasons for doing what he does, right? They're gonna, it's gonna help him personally. Let's just assume he does it for his own selfish reasons. He's gonna make the city better. He will, he will. Let's see what happens. He will. I, I, I do. Wish for his success if he wins. I mean, it's looking like he's winning, yeah. right? Uh, uh, in the primary, he kind of crushed Karen Bass. Yeah. Um, I mean, but also he spent $40 million doing it. Good for him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. It's I mean, listen, listen, it's practically a done deal that this guy's going to win. He has, and, so I, this, and, and I this goes truly, to messaging. I truly hope that he does so well. This goes to messaging and how important messaging and marketing is, which is he overnight overnight he makes a decision the tailwinds are behind him because he just he gathered the support kim kardashian gwyneth paltrow all these huge names he got them to uh elon musk you do that and it just you it, it's that's why that's the only way there's hope for gun control right you need to have this concerted effort somehow some way the nri has done such a good job at messaging for so long you need to have just a confluence of events that bring gun control into like to a place where you have Matthew McConaughey and all these people from all different sectors coming together. And then the messaging will hopefully turn. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and, and that could lead us right into, into a couple of our stories, right? Because we have, we have, I think like three different gun related stories. 
Um, first of all, the Matthew McConaughey thing, he did kind of deliver some actionables for us, like yep. of like the types of things raising we can the do. guns to 21, raising but, uh, the guns to 21. Why is that for important? instance, New York governor, okay. the New York governor signs a law raising the age to own semi-automatic rifles. Now this is great, right? I believe in, in incremental steps and getting what you can get past past. Okay. Like I, 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 I never really understood the whole like, Oh, well we can't pass anything big. So we're not going to pass anything at all. Like I never really believed in that. I have a hard time thinking that like the state that like that passing anything at the state level is going to solve anything on gun control because like you just kind of just go to the next state and kill somebody. Like you're not going to stop somebody if you if if you can get the gun in state one. And you're right. And you're right. And so like I don't think this is a law that anybody at any point should get up and clap for these people. You know, it's it's not something like, oh, this is so great. Like, I, I, I don't think anybody should be getting good press for, like, passing one of these very simple laws uh, at the state level. I think that it is really important to momentum to, of, of just, like, like I, you pass this little bill and you pass another little yeah. bill. And, like, as the Republicans say, like, with each little bill, like, you get a little bit more restricted and yeah. amazing. And, like... like <laughs> <laughs> they're eventually coming for your guns yeah yeah yeah. like literally eventually we'll get their guns i'll take what i can take right now yeah yeah you know so just so just no look it's it's if it's it's better than nothing that's the best that you could say for it exactly um another problem when it comes to the messaging of guns is that i think a lot of the uh coastal elites as they say like you <laughs> i'm not an elite <laughs> a lot of the uh the coastal elites um i think we don't realize how fetishized guns are you know like like i find it creepy i find it like i find it it's it's like it's like it's almost like i i know this sounds crazy but like it's the same type of thing where people are obsessed with uh, you know, no sex before marriage or obsessed with like anti-gay stuff. It's like, there's, it's, it's so, it's, there's something or even obsessed with the gym. I go, dude, I work out five hours a day. It's like, dude, there's a little, there's something a little creepy about it. Like why, when, when, when a, when a tough guy talks about going and shooting deer, there's something that just doesn't vibe with me. Or like, dude, the, like I love going to the shooting range. And so here's Why? the thing, though, like, like, like it doesn't make sense to you. Like, okay, great, doesn't make sense to you. It doesn't matter because it makes sense to them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you just saying like, oh, it doesn't make sense to to me. What does that do? I agree. That's why you need to have the Matthew McConaughey speak to this issue. Or I need to I need to become a better communicator and be able to say like, no, I get it. I get it. I really understand the obsession with guns. I just I, I can't authentically say that right now. I hate them so much. I look at people dying and I look at them and I'm like, this is the dumbest fucking thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And it's just, I'm too emotional about it to like, this is why I I would. I'll say this on the messaging topic. It's because Republicans use propaganda. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like very blatant, very obvious, very like I'm trying to push a message and Mm -hmm. like we're pushing it. Yeah. Where, like, Dems don't really do it, you know? I don't know. I haven't been excited by a Democrat in... I was excited by Pete Buttigieg. I was. Really? I was kind of, now no, I'm just... Yeah. Bernie, Bernie in, like, in, like, 2016 was the last time I was, like, excited. Who else is there? There's not, yeah, I don't, I can't even think of anybody. I wish, like, uh, you know those handful of girls that are, like, all really anti-Semitic in Congress... Oh yeah, the 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 Talib and yeah yeah, yeah yeah like I wish they weren't anti-Semitic because I would <laughs> love them so much. Yeah, I'm not saying we're not saying that they're anti-Semitic uh, for legal purposes. Yeah, we're yeah, saying yeah, that yeah, they've yeah. it's a, been alleged that they're anti-Semitic. I don't know. Like, listen, not to open up that can of worms. Not to, you know what <laughs> you know what we're not going to talk about as well. Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what else are we talking about? Okay, so we actually do have uh, uh, another gun story. And this is that the U.S. Marines 
It says here, it says here, they honor, they honor, they honor Pride Month with rainbow bullets. Yeah. Met with backlash. No shit met with backlash. It's, it's like, I don't know when this happened. I think like it might be like a, like a really old story might not even be true. <laughs> I don't know. I'll say it and then you could tell me if you've ever heard of it. You ever heard of like like uh Christian soldiers covering their bullets with with like uh crosses? No, with with uh uh pork fat. I feel like to, I've heard something like that before. Right? I don't know. Give me that kind of vibe. Mm. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's even just like when I see people posting pictures with guns and their kids look like anything, anything like this with guns, it's like, I, I don't like it. I don't, I don't, it doesn't, there's no good messaging where you're promoting the use of a gun for me. Unless it's literally a good guy killing a bad guy which happens so very rarely so good guy killing a bad guy we had cops we had i don't know how many there's a dozen cops right a little bit more than a dozen cops dozen and a half. 19 cops 19 cops standing outside kids getting killed standing outside doing nothing mm -hmm. whatever this woman this uh amazingly the the pro-gun people who love they they jerk off to to guns they somehow couldn't be tough enough with their guns to go kill the shooter nope instead this this mom right uh what was her name angelie gomez told cbs news on thursday that she was forced to rush into the school after watching police Failed to quickly respond to the deadly shooting. Okay, right. So the cops do nothing. The good guy with the gun, right? Does nothing. Um, and then, after speaking critically about the ins incident to media outlets, Gomez said an officer threatened to charge her for violating probation on an unrelated charge for obstruction of justice. Yeah, because it's everything is about messaging. They didn't want her speaking out against the boys in blue. This is everything. If you everything in life is about as is is about the appearance. It's not about the substance. When, when do you think when do you think government organizations uh -huh. uh, on any scale, on any level, in in any uh, specific category, right? Like from police departments to like the CDC, all, all over. When do you think? they'll get that messaging is all of it. Do they already they get do. it? What do you mean? They have the communications departments. They have a head of communications. They, they, this is a thing. This is not, this is not even, this is, this is, this is everything. This is, this is Jen Psaki, uh, like, like, you know, the, being the head, uh, you know, what, what, what does she do? She was the, press secretary. she's the press secretary. This is, I mean, these are the, this is, they understand that marketing is everything. They, there's a reason why the police department in Uvalde was trying to retaliate against this woman for speaking out. They understand. They don't want to be shamed and looked at as incompetent and basically complete hypocrites. Interesting. Yeah. <sighs> Should we move on to, to some other stories, some yes. not gun-related stories? Yes, please. Okay. This is this is still you know a little bit politically, which I like. You know, I, th it. I think I think the the theme is there. Why we need middle aged leaders to replace baby boomers? We were talking about it earlier. Biden can't form can't finish the sentence. Uh, Matthew McConaughey delivers the speech at the White House press briefing room. Uh, turns out to be something that impresses a lot of people across the spectrum. Um, everybody enjoys it. Why? Because he's really good at communicating. He's really good messenger. Really on brand. For the uh, for for what we've been talking about in this article, talking about how we need younger people in uh, leadership positions uh, uh, in any in industry, uh, particularly politics, um, I think is is also all about communicating, right? Yeah. I think there there is an age divide. Call it forty five. Call it older. Call it sixty five. Mm -hmm. Where 
you, you're just you you grew up in different worlds, right? Yeah. So many members of Congress who don't know like how to send an email. Where like now people grow people under like 12 years old their entire lives are on devices right. you know and so younger people who understand that can do a better job of governing and leading there yeah um yeah i, I agree with that <laughs> yeah i mean look it's tough because i have i have to be careful on or i i think we have to be careful why do you need to be careful when i say have to be careful is that i highly as as the bible taught us the torah taught us to be respectful of your elders and do you think age demands respect you think no uh not in and of itself right you could have a piece of garbage older person who you don't need to respect but i think the default is that america does not treat its elders well even though i know it sounds like you know we who have does a, america treat well america doesn't treat nobody well. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean um no but we we discriminate against other people in the workplace i have people come to me all the time that are discriminated against and speed up old person you know that happens all the time so look i think it's a balance you have some of the most talented people in the world are in their teens and 20s and 30s and Zuckerberg and Musk and all these people um, that were doing these great things at younger ages. But there is something to having experience and 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 having gone through things. And I think I think older people are very important to 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 everything. I think I think their experience, their guidance, the the they've been through it all. There's there's a lot there that older people can be helpful and i think not also if they're stuck in their ways not if they're not surrounding themselves with younger people exactly. and understanding like, what like the it, it, it's not about their age it's about their performance but their age is often a a nice way of wrapping that up of saying like of like saying like hey with your age comes this like slow down in performance you're not mm -hmm. performing well for your district yeah right um your your politics are older yeah and like just people just don't agree with it anymore and i think like you know i i wonder if my generation and younger will be the voting block that eventually is like i fuck these older people yeah i mean it'd be interesting to see who in your generation is actually selfless enough to even be in politics so you have two kids you have two kids they're yeah. how old eight and four Eight and four. Okay. So they're 10 and 14 years away from voting. Yeah. And they are, they, 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 they actually are into politics. Like when they, like not specifically, but they're like, who are you voting for? Who are you voting for? Who are you voting for? They're into it. Interesting. Yeah. Cause it's a contest. Right. Winning, sure. losing. You right. know, yeah, so. absolutely. <laughs> There's the, the, the horse race and they're, and they're yeah. interested in the horse race. When you look at them and their friends, do you see yourself not I'm not saying like, oh, like my kids are going to go run for president. Like, but do you see them as people who will be engaged in politics? Yeah, I mean, my my son, like wanted to listen to the whole State of the Union speech. He's talking about he's just talking about how like I forgot the name of the country is the poorest country in the world. He's talking about Ukraine, Russia. I mean, he's talking about Do they have do they like believe in this like grandeur of like the office of the president of the United States? I think so. Or, or it's just like, another yeah, I mean, guy. look, it's all about messaging. It's all about like, what are his parents, what are their parents telling them about it? Right. If their parents were people who were like, screw the government, everybody in the government is a piece of crap, bureaucrat, red tape, sucking mother. Then that's the message. I like, I think that we, uh provide a pretty balanced view that like hey these are these are people that are making the rules and we got to follow them and like you got to challenge them where it makes sense but like yeah pretty much like giving giving making it clear that like there's a government that's operating and they've been elected and and um like like there's a seriousness around being elected as a mayor or a governor or the president yeah Let's move on to another story. Messaging still. Yeah. Still, still, I want to, to take it on from the angle of messaging. 
A California court rules that bees are a type of fish in order to protect them under the state's Endangered Species Act. Okay, so what is this called? Judicial interpretation or some shit like that, right? What's that? Oh, sure. Well, this is this is just another. Ex- people are like, you know, when people come to me, like, this is a slam dunk case. No. Nothing is a slam dunk case. You don't know what judge you're going to get assigned to. You don't know what political trap you're falling into on a random issue. You don't know what legislation is in the pipeline. We have so many issues that come up every single day that you're like, this should be the result of this case, but it's not because of the way that the current and oh, people are more sympathetic right now to employers because they just went through COVID. These, that's not a law. There's no law there. It's just the feeling, the general consensus, poor employers are going through the after effects of COVID, right? So like every single thing in law, yes, there are laws, but there wouldn't be so many lawyers if everything was a black and white case. Almost everything is gray. Almost everything is gray area, and that's what lawyers get paid to do. They get paid to message. How do I box this, this, how do I box my client's arguments in the most beautiful uh, PR? When you, okay, when you look at this, when you look at this case, is it a dub? What is a dub? W, a win. Oh, W, excuse me, sorry. Um, I don't, like, I don't particularly have a point, a perspective on, like, what should be endangered species, but this is a perfect example of, it's, like, laws are living and breathing through the court system and through judges. This is not a black and white issue, clearly. This is an issue that the judges, like, basically there's consensus around, like, we need to deem this person to be a particular part of endangered species, and, like, if you had this same case heard by conservative judges appointed by George W. W. Bush or Trump, it could have, I don't even, I don't think it was a a conservative judge who found this, but like it could easily have gone the other way. Okay. You, you convinced me not to really care. (laughs) Well, it's just, there is, there is something about the fact that everything is seemingly bullshit at points, you know, that is frustrating. Yeah. You know, but you got to live in the world that you are in. You're in. All right. So we got one more story for everybody. This is a fun one. Benji, how many meals do you eat a day? You you trying to fat shame me? <laughs> no, seriously, how, how many meals do you eat a day? No, what I try to do is I try to eat intuitively, which is really hard for me to do. It's been a lifelong struggle, yada, yada, yada. We've talked about it. Da, da, da. Sure. I try to eat three meals a day. Okay. And I try to, yeah, I try to eat three meals a day. And uh, is that a balanced diet? Is it, does it range? It ranges. Like for me, um, what I value most is like thinking about food less. So, you know, how like Steve Jobs wore the same outfit every day. Like a lot of people think, including people close to me, like you should like when you eat, it should be exactly what you want, what you're feeling like for in the moment. That's not how I sort of view it. I think in my best moments, that's how I view it. But like in general, to make my life easier, to make my life more efficient, I kind of like going with some similar stuff, like eating. I've had, you know, over the last several years, I've had like 97% of my mornings have started with a reduced fat turkey bacon from Starbucks, that type of thing. Nice. Well, what would you think about instant noodles? Three three meals a day, every day. Honestly, it sounds kind of amazing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sounds kind of amazing. No, if, you're, I, if you're a wife was making you <laughs> instant no, noodles. Then no, th- no. My girl actually like takes amazing care and um, basically like does, you know, she always makes sure that like we're using real deal plates and we're like, we're not using pl- paper plates. She always makes sure that like we're having home cooked meals. And I think that if she just did straight up like noodles every day, like warm up like ramen noodles. You'd leave her. I wouldn't leave her, but I think I'd voice my opinion. Interesting that you wouldn't leave her. A man in India divorced Uh his wife for cooking him instant noodles for all his meals. A judge said, wow, that's really, that's really the entire story. I mean, it goes, (laughs) it goes further, but like not really. (laughs) It's one of those like surface level stories that like, it's just kind of fun. We try to, we try to pick a fun story every week. Yeah. Here it is. All right. what, What would you do? 
I would cook for myself. Ooh. Because I don't need no woman Ooh. in the kitchen for me. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Although I would love if my girlfriend did cook for me a little bit. She doesn't at all. What's going on, Kiana? I know. What would you like? Okay, so let's talk about it really quickly. <laughs> what is she open to this at all or no? Yeah. She's just, it's just not her thing. I think, I think for, uh, she has a lot of like chicken anxiety of uh -huh. just like, oh, is this fully cooked? Oh, uh, I hear that. Um, Which is like completely valid. I think, I think even me, I've cooked chicken like a million times. Yeah. Yeah. You still have this feeling just every time where you're just like, just like, is it is it fully cooked? So like, I don't know. It? Like it's so funny. Like you know, you think you know people, but you don't really know. Like I don't know. If you probably wouldn't guess this about me, but I have like spoilage anxiety, or like or like you know that type of thing. Like where I'm scared of something being not fully cooked. Sure. Like if if a spoilage date says January fifth, twenty twenty two, when is the latest that you would eat it? January 5th, 2022. Okay. First of all, it depends what it is. Okay. Canned foods. Yeah. Depending. Like if it's canned like veg. Yeah. I'll, I'll eat it like like a like a couple months after. That's disgusting. Keep going. Okay. Milk is done Jan 4th. That's, um, that's, that's way too late in my opinion. Way too late. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's pasteurized. No, it doesn't matter. It needs to be like five days before. Even then it's a little bit scary. I don't, and people will say, it doesn't matter what it says on the box. Yes, it does. Because I'm not saying that I will even eat it at the date of the box. It needs to be several days before. Wow. After, it's a, it's a wrap. Interesting. Yeah. Sometimes I forget you had a spoon up your ass. <laughs> no, it's not. I mean, it's, I mean, yes, it probably is that. <laughs> it probably is that. I love how you pretend, you know, yes. Yeah, but like, you know those, you know those spoons that like, that like <laughs> come with like a cereal box, like the prize. Yeah. You know, and it's like this little like small spoons, like little plastic. You really think you have my life that's, all figured out, huh? That's, no, that little spoon, yeah. that's the spoon up my ass. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You think I had a bigger spoon up my ass? Yeah. How do you know? I just do. Why? You've never done laundry in your life. That's true. <laughs> yeah. okay. That's a spoon up your ass. What if I just, yeah, I don't have a good answer for that. No. You, uh, okay. Yeah. Anything else? I mean, I mean, yeah, but we don't need to get that deep. <laughs> I think, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you this. Instead of attacking you in the, in, in, in the, the uh, fat spoon up your ass, the fat like soup plantation soup spoon up your ass. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I'll tell you what I've been doing. I have been every single time I've noticed something that is like, oh, like, I'm lucky that I get to do this because of the socioeconomic position that I'm in. Yeah. Whatever it is. Um, I always try to be like, I, I always try to like out loud say like, I, that's a privilege. Um, I'm grateful. Exactly. And, and you'll notice throughout the day how much shit. Like you could say that. Too. I actually do something with my kids every single night, and we say what we're grateful for, and it actually really like grounds me and and them. It's a, it's actually like it's like like you really start to think like I could use every part of my body. There's a lot of things to yeah. be grateful for. So key takeaways for the for this episode: two things. One, messaging is the most important thing. It's all about messaging. Um, you can't really operate without it. Two, spend some time this evening after you've listened to this pod. Uh, appreciating what you've been Message grateful us. for. Tell us what you're grateful for. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to legal tip. In California, you can use your sick pay to take your kid to the doctor. Yes, you could use it to take a, an immediate family member, such as a kid or a spouse, to the doctor in addition to yourself. You're living in some part of the country you know, maybe New York, maybe you're even living in San Francisco. Somebody promises you this amazing opportunity in Los Angeles, California. Come work for me. It's gonna be amazing. You're gonna be able to have all these opportunities and earn these commissions. So and I pack my car, you load it car, up, I head it over up. to Los Angeles, yep. park it, get an apartment, unpack, I come in for work. You relocate. What's a, what's a way that the kids say it these days? 
No? I don't know. Yeah, who cares? Because we're not talking about the kids. <laughs> okay, no, we're talking about the kids. So they, you move to, to Los Angeles right. for this amazing opportunity you've been promised. You get there, and it's not what they told you it was going to be. They yeah, induced you. They brought you in on what the kids call cap. That means false False information. Right. Those opportunities they but promised. But what am I going to do now? I moved here. I got in the car, all my loans, everything. I put down a down payment. What am I going to do, Benji? You call me. You call me so I could help you navigate this situation. There are specific laws in California. How do I call you? You call us at 1 833 Lawflip. 1 833 Lawflip? Yeah, 1833 Lawflip. 1 833 Lawflip. And what you do is you've been induced to come to a job where they misrepresented things to you and either they fired you or you're having a hard time there, you call us, we'll help you get through it. So, Ariane, how was it hosting this episode? You know, I called you this morning. I called you around like 9 a.m. It was right, it was was like a few minutes after I got out of therapy. I was like, Benji, today I had a really tough session of therapy. Um, I'm not doing too hot. Like, you're going to have to carry this episode. Mm-hmm. And we kind of got in today and like, it kind of just started festering this just like, I, I had a lot of, I had a lot of just like things, thoughts around messaging. And I was like, you know what? Like, I think, I think now's the time to just say, fuck it. And just like, just like be a little louder today. And I was like, you know what, Benji, I'm going to open the episode. I kind of ran the table for a little bit. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do so. I hope the audience enjoyed it. I know we were a little bit all over the place, mm-hmm. but, uh. It yeah, was fun. Here we are now. It was fun. We're proud of you, not only as a podcaster, but as a human, Ariane. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Okay, we'll see you next time. See you next time, Lawflip. <laughs> <laughs>